In the two years between 1989 and 1990, a serial killer brutally kidnapped and murdered 10 women. More than a decade passed, but the killer remained at large. However, one day in 2007, the killer suddenly appeared in public, not only confessed all his crimes, but also wrote a new book called I Am a Murderer, which fully documented his killing methods and process. But the police can do nothing about this guy, because the case has exceeded 15 years of the statute of limitations, and justice can no longer be held responsible for the murderer. The murderer then turned into a best-selling author. Can this demon really escape justice forever? Hi guys, today Detective Jojo is going to tell you about a suspense crime film adapted from an actual event called, Confession of Murder. In 1990, a serial killer in Korea killed 10 women. Our main character is a detective nicknamed Mr. Scar. He chased the serial killer into the tavern. The murderer took the tavern's owner hostage and slit her throat in front of Mr. Scar. Mr. Scar told the witnesses the first aid method, then continued to chase the murderer, and finally forced the murderer to a dead end, but he was no match for the murderer's strength and was almost killed by the murderer. The murderer did not kill Mr. Scar, but only used a knife to cut the corner of his mouth, leaving a long wound. He then gleefully told Mr. Scar that he did not kill Mr. Scar because he wanted Mr. Scar to preach his murderous deeds, because he enjoyed the attention of everyone. If Mr. Scar does not cooperate, his next target will be Mr. Scar's mother. After saying that, the murderer turned away, Mr. Scar picked up the gun and fired a few shots at the murderer's back with all his strength, but he didn't know if he had hit the murderer. From that day, the murderer disappeared and never committed any crime again. Mr. Scar has been looking for this killer for 15 years, but unfortunately, until now, he has not found any clues. Thankfully, the seriously injured tavern owner was eventually resuscitated. This day, Mr. Scar is drinking at the tavern. Today is the last day of the statute of limitations for serial murder cases. After 12 o'clock tonight, the murderer will escape justice because the statute of limitations in Korea is 15 years. Mr. Scar suddenly receives a phone call. The call comes from Jack, the son of the first victim of the serial murder. After his mother was murdered, Jack had no one to turn to. For the past 15 years, Mr. Scar has been taking care of Jack, but Jack's mother's death has always been a thorn in Jack's heart. For 15 years, Jack has not had a good sleep. Today, he sees that the statute of limitations has expired, the murderer has escaped justice, a hopeless Jack decides to commit suicide and reunite with his mother in heaven. <laughs> Two years later, Mr. Scar is sleeping at home when the news on the TV suddenly awakens him. The killer of the serial murder case has been found. The young man on the TV named Tom, claims to be the murderer. He claims that he has written all the details of his crime in his book called I Am a Murderer. He confesses his crime at his book launch and also shows the bullet holes he was hit by Mr. Scar's gun back then. Tom tells the media that he intends to atone for his sins. He first kneels at the door of the victim's family, begging for forgiveness, then gives donations to charity, using various means to put himself in the limelight. The irony is that it doesn't take long for Tom to gain a huge fan base with his handsome face and repentant attitude, and a murderer who killed a dozen people has then turned into a best-selling author. The police can't arrest him because the statute of limitations for serial murder cases has passed. The police wonder if Tom is the real killer. Mr. Scar thinks that Tom is at most 30 years old now, so Tom was just a teenager when the murder cases happened. Mr. Scar doesn't quite believe that he was defeated by a teenage boy back then. But Tom's novel called, I Am a Murderer, contains almost all the details of the murder cases. Moreover, Tom has a bullet hole in his shoulder, it matches the gun type that Mr. Scar used at the time, it seems like he is indeed the murderer. The only doubt is that Tom's book does not contain details about the last case of the victim called Emily. There were in fact 11 victims of the serial murders. Ten women were murdered. Another woman named Emily went missing in that period, but her remains are yet to be found. Emily, is Mr. Scar's lover. Since the police have not been able to find Emily's body, they don't know whether Emily is alive or dead. Tom wrote ten murder cases in his book except the case of Emily. Why didn't Tom write the details of Emily's case in his book, or did someone else kidnap Emily? At this moment, 
Tom comes to the police station. He knows that the statute of limitations has expired and the police can do nothing about him, so he swaggers into the police station with a group of reporters, as if he has come here specifically to mock the incompetence of the police. Full of anger, Mr. Scar throws his lunch into Tom's face. While the police station is in chaos, on the other side, in a small wooden house in the suburbs, five secretive-looking people gather silently. Their ages, identities and occupations vary, but they have one thing in common, they are all family members of the victims of the serial murders back then. The organizer of the meeting is called Mrs. Rich. She is the mother of Emily, the victim of the last case that year. Although the police have not been able to find Emily, according to the murderer's brutal methods, Emily should have died. Let me introduce the rest of the members here at the meeting. This is a father and daughter, Mary and Mary's father. The serial killer brutally killed Mary's mother. Since then, Mary has learned to shoot crossbows at long range because she is waiting for the day to avenge her mother. The man with the pompous expression is called Mr. Unhappy. After his relative was killed by the serial killer, he wanted to kill the murderer every day. The last member doesn't talk much, he wears a suit, so maybe we can call him Mr. Suit. They know the statute of limitations for serial murder cases has expired, and the law can't bring Tom to justice. Therefore, they gather together and try to kidnap Tom to torture him to death. Maybe we can call them the Avengers Alliance. After some investigation, they find out that Tom goes swimming at the hotel every day. Then, they come up with a plan. Mary's father disguises himself as a cleaning staff to come to the pool, and secretly pours a poisonous snake into the water, so that Tom gets bitten by the snake. Then, the other members of the Avengers Alliance, disguised as first responders, take Tom away with a fake ambulance. The whole plan is almost seamless, but the only thing that they ignore is how fast the real ambulance arrives. They have just brought Tom to the car when the real ambulance arrives at the scene. The scene is very awkward. To help his members escape, Mr. Unhappy pulls out a knife and confronts the four bodyguards, and finally, he manages to get into the car with his incredible running speed. Mr. Scar hears about the case and rushes to the scene. He passes by the Avenger's car and immediately recognizes Mary's father, who is driving the car, because Mr. Scar often deals with these victims' families when investigating cases. Mr. Scar writes down the license plate number and finds out the renter of the car is Mrs. Rich. Then Mr. Scar traces Mrs. Rich's cell phone signal and finds the Avenger's small house in the suburbs. Mr. Scar puts on his night vision helmet, pulls the electric switch, and carries Tom away while the Avengers can't see anything. He takes Tom to a small hotel. At this moment, he could have killed Tom to avenge the ten dead victims. But he did not do so, leaving Tom alone in a small hotel. Unexpectedly, Tom wakes up the next day and tells the media that the people who kidnapped him were his overzealous fans. He will not press any charges against the abductors. The reporter asks him if he will attend next week's televised debate with Mr. Scar to prove that he is the serial killer. Tom says he will definitely attend it. The following week, Tom and Mr. Scar appear on a televised debate, where Mr. Scar questions that Tom is not the real serial killer. Mr. Scar says that between 1989 and 1990, ten women were murdered. Another woman named Emily went missing in that period, but her remains are yet to be found. Mr. Scar is certain that Emily Case was also the work of the serial killer and this was his final kill. But Tom didn't mention this case in his novel. So Mr. Scar believes Tom is not the real killer. Tom laughs and insists that he is the serial killer, he didn't write Emily's case because Emily's case was not done by him at all. When the two are at a standoff, the TV show allows people to call in and ask questions. A veteran calling himself John asks Tom several strange questions. The first question is, does Tom know how fast Mr. Scar runs the 100 meters? Tom is unable to answer. John says it is 12 seconds. Then John asks a second question. He read Tom's novel that states Tom performed a judo flip to pin Mr. Scar down. John asks Tom if he knows judo or other martial arts. Tom replies that he doesn't have to be a judo player to use that technique. John then says he majored in judo at the College of Physical Education. John confesses that he knows Mr. Scar so well because he is the real killer of the serial murders. At this moment, both Mr. Scar and Tom are shocked. The Avengers, who are watching the TV show, are surprised to hear that. 
Is John the real serial killer? They look at each other, and suddenly discovers that Mary is missing. At this time, Mary has already set up her crossbow and is hiding behind the giant billboard opposite the TV station. When Tom comes out of the TV station, Mary sees the opportunity to shoot a crossbow arrow. Since Mary's mother was killed, Mary and her father have been in pain and despair. For more than ten years, Mary has been practicing archery to kill her enemy. That crossbow arrow accurately shoots through Tom's body. Tom is seriously injured and in a coma, Mary is arrested by the police. On the other hand, Mr. Scar traces John's address, and is surprised to find that John called from Mr. Scar's home address. Mr. Scar's mother, who is alone at home, does not answer Mr. Scar's call, Mr. Scar rushes home in a panic, fortunately his mother is safe. At this moment, he finds a mysterious masked man greeting him in an abandoned apartment across the street, Mr. Scar immediately chases after him. When he arrives, the masked man has already disappeared, leaving a videotape and a rusty dagger. After DNA testing, the blood on the knife is identical to the Mr. Scar's, it was the dagger the killer used to cut Mr. Scar's mouth. After playing the tape, they see the eleventh victim Emily in the video. Both things seem to prove that John is the real murderer. Mr. Scar immediately holds a press conference to announce the evidence. He declares that now both Tom and John could be the serial killer, because the case details Tom wrote in his book are so accurate that only the killer could have written them. Moreover, the slug in his shoulder matches the gun type that Mr. Scar used at the time. John has the murder weapon and a videotape related to the victim Emily so that he could be the killer too. Tom wakes up from the coma and holds a press conference, claiming that John has stolen the dagger from his safe. Tom also accuses John of being a copycat murderer. He says that Emily was the victim of John's copycat crime. After learning that Mary who shot him is also a family member of the victim, Tom says he will not press any charges against her. He will compensate the victim's family with the proceeds from his book I'm a Murderer. Tom's atonement brings the public's attention back to him, and the mystery man, John, is completely enraged. John finds the media and claims he wants to confront Mr. Scar and Tom on live TV to prove he is the real killer. John then hands over a videotape showing him wearing a mask and making a mark on a large tree in the woods. He claims that there is evidence buried under the tree that proves he is the killer and that he will announce the tree's exact location within three hours before the broadcast begins. A serial murder case, there are two people rushing to prove that they are the real killer, the television executives are very excited. After some arrangements, the live broadcast soon begins, Mrs. Rich as the representative of the victim's family also comes to the scene, she has prepared a pen filled with snake venom, no matter who is the real killer, she will find a chance to end his life to avenge the death of her daughter Emily. The live broadcast has started. John finally takes off his mask, he looks more ordinary than expected. The TV crew has found the marked tree under John's guidance. They dig out the evidence under the tree to verify that John is the murderer, and it is Emily's bones. The white bones extinguish Mrs. Rich's last hope, Mr. Scar also feels painful at this point. Emily is not only Mrs. Rich's daughter, but also Mr. Scar's beloved fiancé. When they meet again, Emily is already a white skeleton. John tells Mr. Scar that he chose to kill Emily in the end because he wanted to torture Mr. Scar. When the host sees that John already has enough evidence to prove that he is the real killer, the host then asks Tom if he wants to insist he is the murderer or not. This time, Tom doesn't defend himself and frankly admits that he is indeed not the real killer. But why would there be so many details in Tom's book that only the killer would know? At this point Mr. Scar, who is immersed in grief, speaks up. Mr. Scar tells everyone that the author of Tom's novel is not Tom, but Mr. Scar. He wrote the book with all the findings of his investigation over the past ten years. As the murderer disappeared with Emily, Mr. Scar didn't have any new clues. That's why this novel is missing the last case about Emily. Tom is actually Jack the son of the first victim. Jack is the guy who tried to commit suicide in the beginning when the statute of limitations expired. He didn't die at that time, but his face took serious damage that required reconstructive surgery. So Mr. Scar created a new Jack named Tom with plastic surgery. Then Mr. Scar plans this scheme to weed out the real killer because Mr. Scar knows that John is a megalomaniac who desires national attention and he will never let his crime be claimed by someone else. 
John smiles and boasts that Mr. Scar's scheme is really wonderful, but the statute of limitations has expired, so what could they do with John? Looking at John's smug smile, Mr. Scar replays the tape John left behind. In the video, Emily asked John to dial Mr. Scar's phone, so that she could hear her lover's voice once more before she died. At that time, Mr. Scar's colleagues were watching live television, resulting in a noisy background, the noisy background sound can prove that Emily was killed on the night of the 13th presidential election, that is December 19, 1992, at midnight. The current time is 11.46 p.m. on December 18, 2007, which means there are 14 minutes left before the 15-year statute of limitations expires. 14 minutes is enough for Mr. Scar to arrest John. Mr. Scar draws his pistol and points it at the real killer, and the smile freezes on the demon's face. John then tells the truth about the last case about Emily. John did not kill Emily immediately after he kidnapped her, but held her captive for two years. For two years he used Emily as a tool for his own lust, until Emily became pregnant and John chose to kill her. Mr. Scar is so enraged by John that he almost can't resist and shoot the bastard. When Mr. Scar's colleague sees this, he immediately jumps over to stop Mr. Scar. In the chaos, Mr. Scar's colleague's gun goes off and breaks the power lines in the studio, which immediately plunges the scene into darkness. John takes advantage of the chaos to escape, Mrs. Rich goes forward to kill the real killer, but she is no match for John, who has been a soldier, and becomes John's hostage instead, John holds Mrs. Rich hostage and escapes into the elevator, while Tom squeezes into the elevator to save Mrs. Rich, but his arrow wound has not yet healed, Tom also fails to stop John from running away. John escapes all the way out of the TV station, and then grabs a car to run away. Mary's father, who is ambushed downstairs, drives a forklift and directly crashes John's car into the ground, and then tries to use the forks to kill John, but John manages to escape. Then John grabs a motorcycle and runs frantically while Mr. Scar chases after him. Mr. Scar finally stops the killer, at this moment there are only three minutes left before the expiration of the statute of limitations. Mr. Scar finally fights John again, and this time he manages to beat John up with blood all over his face. The police then arrives and arrests John. Three minutes have already passed. The statute of limitations has expired, and John smiles as he has successfully escaped justice. The Avengers also chase to the scene, the grief-stricken Mrs. Rich raises the pen in her hand and tries to stab the killer in the chest, only to be stopped by Mr. Scar. The killer once again smiles smugly, thinking that Mr. Scar is protecting him as a police officer, but the next second, John can no longer smile, because Mr. Scar stabs the pen into John's body, and the snake venom has been injected into John's body through the pen. To protect Emily's mother and to avenge Emily's death, Mr. Scar kills the demon himself. At the movie's end, Mr. Scar is sentenced to five years in prison for the murder. On the day of his release, Mrs. Rich returns the watch that Mr. Scar broke when he fought with John. It was a gift from Emily to Mr. Scar the day she was kidnapped. The story ends here. The story of I Am a Murderer is based on the crimes of Issei Sagawa, a famous Japanese murderer. This demon committed a heinous crime against a female classmate while studying in Paris, but with his father's power and money, the murderer escaped justice using the excuse that he was mentally ill and regained his freedom after only 15 months in the mental hospital. The film combines this case with the Korean statute of limitations period, and uses great skill to weave an intricate and thrilling story. After its release, the film sparked a full-blown debate in Korea, and public opinion eventually pushed for reform of Korean criminal law. After 2007, the statute of limitations period for criminal cases in Korea was extended from 15 years to 25 years. In 2015, the act was amended again to abolish the 25-year statute of limitations for homicide, making it impossible for the statute of limitations to serve as a shield for Korean murderers. Thanks for watching. Detective Jojo will bring up more stories next time.